Hello, I'm so glad you're joining me today. I'm excited to share with you what the Lord has laid on my heart. My name is Mercia, and we are diving into part three of healing. I believe that God wants us healed. He wants us whole, nothing missing, nothing broken. So I'm excited to dive into this part of healing. We are going to talk about different ways to receive healing. The first part, I hope you're able to go back. If you haven't, go and watch it. The first part I spoke about having two or three witnesses, witnesses in the scriptures, finding scriptures that are relevant to healing or any situation that you find yourself in. If you want to know if this promise is what God wants for us, then find two or three of those scriptures referring to the same thing. And so I've gone through a number of scriptures showing you that there was more than three, that there's a number of scriptures throughout the Bible that speaks about the fact that God always wants his people healed and whole, nothing missing, nothing broken. The second part of healing, I spoke about who's behind sickness and disease, and that is the enemy that we, we have in this world. Um, he's called the father of lies. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so let's be mindful who is behind sickness and disease. And so tonight we're going to talk about different ways to receive healing. There's not a cookie cutter way. I think if you um, have heard people testify about healings that they received, you will find that there was different ways that people received their healing. But in order to receive healing, there we have to walk in faith. We have to believe that that is God's will for our lives and that God is not putting sickness and disease on us to teach us a lesson. No, Jesus wants you to be vibrant. He wants you to be energetic. He wants you to be focused. He wants you to be full of life. He wants you to walk in the gift, the calling, the plan and the purpose that he has for you. And certainly when we are sick, it drains our energy, it steals our joy, it takes our focus off other things uh, and, and puts all the focus on the pain and the, 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 the destruction in our bodies. And God's saying, I don't want that for my children. I want them to run this race and run it strong. Amen. So let's believe what the Bible says about healing and that God's will is healing for our lives. So firstly, I want to talk about us walking in faith and not in doubt. Amen. And in James 1 verse 6 to 8, it says, But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So in order to receive our healing, we need to be focused, fully focused and believe that this is God's will and that I can receive healing. Amen. And that God is the healer. So yes, the Bible says when we lay hands on the sick, they will recover. That is our responsibility. But healing comes from God. I found that even while taking medication, I'm definitely not against doctors, uh, against the medical profession, because even while I suffered with severe depression, I eventually went on meds to help me focus during the day and to sleep at night, because for two years I never slept. I was tormented in, 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 during sleep times, and uh, so I took meds to help me. And I must say to you that it really helped me because suddenly after taking the meds, and I believe that God healed me, and that's why, you know, I could focus during the day and I could sleep at night. But I took them while quoting the scripture, while believing that God's will for me was healing, complete healing. And so here I am today sharing with you the goodness of God the mercy of God and the grace of God. 
So it's important that we stay fully focused and trust the word of God over the situation that we find ourselves in, over the pain that we are experiencing. Believe what God says and keep going. Don't you quit. Don't you doubt that God wants you healed. Yes, people will come and please don't Google your sickness or disease because that is just going to take you off focus. You're going to remember all those things that you Googled about because they said you're going to suffer this pain. You're going to die within so many days or so many months. So don't even go there. Fill your mind with the word of God and believe the promises over what you are hearing. Even though you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you a really bad report, you say, yes, thank you. I will believe the report over the law, of the Lord over the doctor's report. And if there's anything that you find that the doctor wants you to do and you feel led in your heart that you're going to go that route, you can still trust God during that time. While you're taking the meds, while you're doing the operation, um, you know, until you are healthy and strong and you're so full of the word, you will say to the doctor, listen, yeah, I don't need any of that. I'm going to believe what the Bible says and I'm going to stand on his promises until I see the manifestation, until I see my healing. So let's look at the centurion. What happened to him? The centurion's servant was very sick. I believe that he really loved his servant. And uh, so he calls upon the Lord to, to heal his servant. And on, on, as, as Jesus was coming towards him, Jesus said, you know what? I will come and lay hands on your servant. But he says, no, no, no. Just let, let me read the scripture. Matthew 8 verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. But only speak a word and my servant will be healed. So powerful. This was great faith. This man was saying, you know, I've watched you, Jesus. I've seen what you've done. You've cast out demons. Demons have spoken to you and we knew that that demon was fleeing. We've seen you touch, lay hands. We've seen you speak a word. And things change, situation change. So, you know, in this case, don't even come near, just say the word. And I know when I get to my servant, he will be completely healed. What great faith is that? And you can have the same faith because you find the word of God and you stand on that word of God. And you say, I'm not letting go. Jesus has spoken this word. This is a word for me because the Bible was written for you and for me as our blueprint for living life to the full and overflowing. So don't quit. You keep believing that what the Bible says is of authority, final authority in your life and expect to receive your healing. We also read in Matthew 9, 20 to 22, what happened to this woman that had an issue of blood for 12 years. So let's read Matthew 9, 20 to 22. Suddenly a woman had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. How powerful. So this is what she determined in her heart. She recognized that people, even when they touched his garments, they were being healed. And so here she is going and, and she determined, you know what, if I just get to the hem of his garment, if I just touch a portion of that hem, I am going to be made well. I am going to be healed. If we read that passage, we find out that she went to many physicians and none of them could help her in any way. And she suffered, we read that, for 12 years. It's a long time having a, a flow of blood. And um, Jesus comes immediately when she touches the hem of his garment. She's made completely healed. And we also recognize from this passage that virtue, the Bible says, 
left him. You know, so he knew immediately somebody had drawn from, from the power, from the authority that he had, and she was made completely healed. She must have been over the moon, so pleased that she was now healed. And so there's another way that a healing came. So we're not going to be able to touch the hem of his garment, but we can stand on his word. We can touch those words. We can believe those words and declare, if I just get that one scripture and I stand on that one scripture, you know, uh, we also recognize throughout scripture that just one word from God can change everything in our lives. And I've, I've experienced that over and over. Just one word I received from the Lord and I stepped out and things just happened for me. God is so good. And so there's another passage, Matthew 9 verse 18. Um, this is the ruler that came to Jesus and said, my daughter is at death's door. Will you come and in Matthew 9, verse 18, it says, While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And I think you immediately recognize what happened in this situation. This man, Jairus, needed Jesus to lay hands on his daughter. That was going to be evidence that she was healed. He needed that. And that is something that we can also, you know, ask the Lord for. I mean, the Bible also speaks about calling the elders and let them lay hands on you, you know. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. So there's another way we can receive healing. And you and I must also get to a place in our lives where we are just ready to lay hands on the sick and they are healed. And again, I want to remind you, don't look at, 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 don't take it as your responsibility. Your responsibility is to lay hands and it's Jesus' responsibility to heal. And we know he always wants, uh, always wants to see people healed, whether it's a Christian or a non-Christian. He wants them healed. When Jesus walked the earth, it was only non-Christians then and he healed them all. So, Let's believe God and just remember where you are at. What is it that you want? Do you want somebody to lay hands on you? Uh, will you believe it when a word is sent to you? That's why when I pray at the end of the program, I say, I send the word to heal you and to deliver you from destruction. And I send the word to heal all your diseases. And so God meets you at the point of your need and he wants you healed today. And I trust that this just encourages you today. Always stand on the word. Believe. Read all of the stories in, in the Gospels where Jesus went about healing, laying hands on the sick, where he spoke the word. He did some things also. I remember he spat in a man's eyes and he, he received his sight. You know, no, we're not going to do that unless God specifically says to you do that. But Jesus did some crazy things and it worked. And so God will give you discernment. And so can we just pray? Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that you have a great plan and a purpose for our lives. I thank you that your will for our lives is healing, complete healing. And so, Lord, we thank you for your word. Your word is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing between soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the intents of the heart. We thank you that your word, Lord, when we read your word, when we speak your word, things begin to change. Things happen. And so, Lord, even right now, I send the word to heal those that need healing. I send the word to heal them, to deliver them from destruction. And we say thank you, Lord. We are mindful that the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But you, Lord, you came to give us life and life more abundantly. 
And so, Father God, we say thank you. Thank you that your promises are true. They are yes and amen. Thank you that you are doing a work in us and through us. Thank you that we are not watching these programs by accident, but by divine appointment, because you are trying to get your word to your people, to set them free, to set the captives free, to heal the brokenhearted, to heal those that are blind, those we speak over the pain and we command pain to leave in Jesus' name. We speak to cancer right now, commanding it to get out and go in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we speak to backache, Lord. We speak to swollen knees and we command healing to take place even right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we say thank you. We thank you that there's an elbow being healed. There's a terrible uh, uh, scar, like a scar on there and, and it's just been painful. You've tried everything. You've put all different kinds of... Um, ointments on and it's not helping you've been to the doctor and you've had meds and it's not helping but i sense the lord saying you are healed now in jesus name the scab is going to fall off and the pain is going to go i sense somebody with just a terrible rash on your face and uh, you're quite embarrassed to even go out because it's so severe but the lord is healing you right now I sense that you're just going to have it. It's going to clear up so beautifully like a, the baby's bottom. And so, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for supernatural healing. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you for the word, the word that sets us free. We thank you, Father God, that when we speak the word, things happen, things change. Because our words, your word in our mouth just produces life. And we thank you, Holy Spirit right now go and set the people free i declare healing over you the bible says the flesh profits nothing the spirit gives life the words that i speak are spirit and life so every time you speak the word of god things begin to change and don't quit believing and don't quit speaking speak over your body declare healing in the areas that you need healing and so lord i just say thank you i speak to every ligament every joint every marrow i speak to the blood the blood vessels the nerves i speak to the bones i speak to the organs i speak to large and small intestine i speak to the head the hair the brain the mind the skin be healed in jesus name cholesterol levels and blood pressure be stabilized in jesus name father we say thank you and we just say thank you for the name of jesus because there's power in the name of jesus there's healing in the name of jesus there's deliverance in the name of jesus there's restoration in the name of jesus so you declare the name of jesus and expect miracles signs and wonders to happen in jesus name Amen and amen. And so I trust you were encouraged today. And so if you've been blessed by this program, why don't you like, subscribe and leave me a comment. I love reading the comments and I love praying for people. And I'm always praying for those that watch these broadcasts. I'm sending lots of love to you. Have a great day in Jesus name. Amen.